Hello, lovely people. Welcome to Hillary at Home. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today's video, it's um, basically the book end. It's the final video that I'm going to be doing about the Outlander TV show. So four months ago, I did my last episode review and I haven't done one since because I sort of watched um, two more episodes after that one and I just went off, off. Outlander and so I gave myself a little bit of time because I thought oh maybe I just need to get over it to you know um, work through it and then I will get back into watching it again but it's been four months and there's still no desire at all to go back to watching it and in fact there has been a very calm parting of ways for me so I just wanted to sort of finish off that series of stuff and explain why I've stopped watching um, Outlander and then I'll be moving on to doing other sorts of videos so if you're interested in finding out about that do stay tuned okay so I think that um, despite a couple of outstanding episodes in season five I feel like season um, this new season has really struggled to you know keep up um, in terms of the pacing and I know it is quite challenging for TV shows to uh, to to keep things as fresh and as exciting as they were before I get that but I also firmly believe that it's ultimately entertainment and I shouldn't have to work hard to be entertained you know, it should be the other way around, despite my loyalty to, you know, the whole Outlander story, the Outlander books and whatever. I just kind of felt like the TV show was just going a little bit. And it started off with a little, you know, with little things like even if you notice the costumes, they don't seem to take as much care as they did with the earlier seasons with the costumes and with some of them you're seeing that they're doing the filming and they're not even wearing the corsets and you can tell because the um clothes are creasing and, you know but those are smaller things and even with some of the scenes where you're seeing that they're very sparse and yes some could say that because of uh you know uh, the lockdowns it meant that they weren't able to have as many extras around and those are things that i could park and ignore but there were just some things I think I boiled it down to how many do I have four four key things that just finally did it for me so I will get into that but you know the 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 scene setting the costumes and things like that though I think that those are small things uh but these were the main ones so the main main thing that just really got me really really wound up was uh the treatment of young Ian um in the show now Ian, basically, if you've read the books, um, he loves, utterly adores Jamie. And the same is true for Jamie. Uh, so Jamie was there when we, Ian, was born um, as a baby. And he's always felt such a closeness to, to Ian, to the extent that um, Ian was basically treating Jamie like, um, like he's dad the dad that he, <laughs> he wanted even though he had a father back home so they're very very close and they've been through thick and thin together and in fact the um part of the entire process of book three the best of all, all of the books in my opinion voyager is jamie is trying to go and find ian to save ian because he he loves ian that much and the same is true um for ian and in fact, Ian gave himself um, up when they sold the whole thing with Roger, where they mistakenly thought Roger was um, bonnet. And so they'd sold him on to the Native Americans as a slave. And the Native Americans would only release Roger in exchange of another person. Ian went and gave himself up before he even told Jamie what his plans were, because he knew Jamie would have stopped him at all costs from doing that. And Ian knew that had he not done that, Jamie would have given himself up to free Roger in order to correct the error that Jamie had made to Bree. So this is how strong the relationship is between the two of them. So imagine my shock, horror and surprise when in this episode that everything is happening with Malva and Malva is pregnant and she's basically accused Jamie of being the father of the baby. 
Jamie suffers a lot of consequences of that, right? Basically, the entire ridge believes that he's the one that fathered that child. And when he goes to this Congress meeting where he is trying to become a representative so that when the war comes, he won't be on the side of the British loyalists. He'll be considered to be on the side of the Americans, the newer budding society. So, that, you know, there's a lot at stake. And Jamie misses out on that nomination because the rumor of Malva gets there before he manages to give his speech, which a lot of people thought, oh yeah, no, he's he's done a great job, but we still can't because of you know this rumor with Malva. And Ian knows about the coming future because they've told the truth to Ian. So Ian understands how crucial it is that Jamie is walking this fine balance between, you know, being a loyalist or being a rebel and how important it is. Right. With all of that background, they then have the audacity to say Ian slept with Malva and Ian thinks that Malva's child might be his. And so the idea is that Ian has stayed quiet throughout all of this slandering of Jamie's character by the people of the Ridge, by the people of the wider North Carolina um, community, because he's just like, it was a cowardly thing to do that he slept with her, and now he's coming forward to it. And I just thought... No, there is no way it doesn't fit in with everything that we know about the character of Ian. Ian has never lacked in courage of facing the consequences of things. You know, he's he's always been somebody who's forthright without guile and just says things as they are. And it's it's really um yeah, so that really got to me. That really, really got to me. And on top of that, right. He doesn't even go forward to Jamie to confess that he thinks he might be the father of Malva's child. He goes to Claire and Claire then tells him to just keep it to himself and that she would just keep it. And I just thought that is so not on. And it's honestly felt to me like they haven't known what to do with Ian since they brought him back early because in the books he doesn't come until a bit later. And I still stand by the fact that when there was that excellent episode where Fergus was really struggling with this idea of, you know, he was going down in a spiral because um, the fact that he's only got one working hand, he's struggling in uh, the ridge, that it should have been Ian who went to talk to him. But because they're trying to elevate Roger, they had Roger be the one that went to talk to Fergus to bring him back to a sense of perspective. But Ian is the one who grew up with Fergus. Ian is the one who did all of those adventures with Fergus. Ian is the one who was around when Fergus was falling in love with Marcy. Ian is the one that was raised by a disabled father. So he's the one that would be able to say to Fergus, listen, just because you've got the one, it doesn't mean that you are any less of a man, that you are any less able to provide for your family. Because look at my dad. My dad was running Lollybrook and all that. And so it really, really got to me. So for me, that was kind of like, you know, they're doing Ian wrong. And Ian is such a great character. So that was what that 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 really <clears throat> really felt like you know when you bite into a sandwich and you think the fat sandwich tastes really great and then there's like some sand grit in the sandwich that's what it felt like so i tentatively finished watching the rest of that episode but it, it was such a huge huge turn because it just felt to me like there's a lot of um either there's a lack of awareness of what the relationship between these two characters are or they know what the importance of the relationship between these two characters are but they just didn't care about it because they just wanted to create a dramatic moment where it was like huh it turns out that Ian also slept with Malva and he's just been cowardly sitting quietly hearing people talk nasty stuff about his uncle and he hasn't been coming forward so mm, yeah so that was number one right the number two thing that uh, sort of became more apparent with me as, as the season was going along was that I wasn't getting a lot of the Jamie, Brianna, and Jem time that 
in the books, one of the most wonderful things that Diana has the capacity to do is to really just describe these daily interactions and things that the family has. And some of them revolve around, first of all, Jamie rediscover, you know, sort of like figuring out how to have a relationship with his daughter, Brianna, that um, at the time it was the only chance that he had of actually seeing one of his own blood-born children with the woman that he loves and, you know, adored and the woman that he would die for, right? So there's something really special there, right? Considering that for 20 years, he's been praying every day, not knowing whether Claire survived or not, but always praying for Claire and the child, Claire and the child and all that. So meeting Brianna is a really huge deal because Jamie had accepted that he would probably never get to see his daughter because she was in the future, but he was making the best of it. So imagine the joy of having to actually see the daughter that he never thought he would ever see. And then they have to navigate this relationship because, you know, um, Brie was raised by Frank, right, who loved and adored her like his own, even though Frank knew about Jamie and he didn't like Jamie. And then Jamie knew about Frank and he's got respect for Frank because Frank Randall raised um raised Brie and also looked after Claire, which Jamie acknowledges would not have been an easy thing to do. But, you know, Diana is able to interweave all of these things so much to the point where when I started reading the books, I didn't like Frank Randall because I was so in love with this idea of Claire and Jamie. But eventually I actually got to a point where I could respect him because, you know, he he did, he, he was a principled, dutiful um, man. And so all of these things are being dealt with, you know, because on the one hand for Brianna as well, she's got loyalty to Frank, but at the same time, she's fascinated by this man that her mom was willing to go back in time for not once, but twice, you know? And so they're figuring their way out with that. And then when Brianna has a baby for Jamie, it's almost like it's an opportunity for him to do the thing that he didn't get to do with Brianna. So he absolutely adores Jem. Absolutely. And some of the best scenes in the book, some of my favorite scenes, are to do with um, Jamie and Jem as he's teaching, you know, his grandson all of the things um, that he would have wanted to teach. And so it's really, really wonderful. And the interactions between Brianna and Jamie in the books are also really, really good. But we see none of that. None of that has been explored or showed in um in in these few seasons. So it's it's just been a little bit, a little bit frustrating for me in that regard. So yeah, because <laughs> I, I would love to see more, more of that. And when they've done it in the past, it's been done so well. Like um there was a scene, um, I think it was from you no know, two seasons ago where Jamie and Brianna are walking and Jamie is collecting bees for um, the beehives. And they're sort of like talking about how bees go home and what have you. And Brianna is sort of, you know, talking about, well, what if they don't want to go home there? What if they don't want to recognize the new home? And what if, and it was a metaphor for, you know, she still recognized Frank Randall, the man who raised her as her dad. But she also recognizes that this is the man who sacrificed everything in order to try and get her and her mom to safety. And so they then come up with um, a name that he could, that she can call him. So, so when it's done, it's done so sweetly and it's wonderful, but he was just lacking um, in this. So, you know, and I felt it more keenly after they did that thing with Ian, because then I was beginning to think that, oh, okay, so the writers of this show Either they just don't really care about the characters anymore or, uh, yeah, I don't know. So that was that. Um, the other third thing that sort of was getting to me was how they were really, um, the pacing of the entire season. So previous seasons, I've always felt like the pacing has been quite, you know, uh, good in terms of um, the passage of time. But with this one, it's just been so hard to tell what the passage of time is. They seem like they're playing fast and loose with it. And it's like there's some episodes that seem to just drag on. Some episodes you couldn't even figure out, oh, wait, have they moved from spring to summer? Has it been months? Because, you know, the travel from here to go all the way to the Mohawk camp 
in the books it was taking at least like um, a month to get there just to get there and then hang on just a little bit <laughs> sorry about that i had to go answer the dog though but yeah so the timelines this is seemed to be there were you know it felt like mm, and then suddenly whoosh, uh, particularly the episode with Malva's pregnancy it just went like from I felt like it went from zero to 60 in 7.5 seconds you know suddenly she's fully pregnant and then you suddenly have right at the end the whole thing with um she's passed out she's you know um passed out on the field and then Claire goes in to try and save the baby and all that and then people and, and it was I don't know, it just, it felt rushed. And I don't understand why it was rushed. And at the time, I thought that maybe I'm being super sensitive because of how they treated Ian um, in, in the TV show. So I did try to give myself some distance from it. That's why I sort of, I stopped watching it. I was just like, you know what? I, I'm not even going to watch the next episode because I was just really, normally when 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 it comes to the end of an episode for me, I... I feel some kind of way, which is kind of good and it has some anticipation. But by the end of this episode, I was just like, come on, come on. You know, and then the very, very final thing was the fact that um, the show has been moved from Prime. So I'm an um, Amazon Prime member, right? And I used to watch it because it's available on Prime. But this time I had to pay an extra five pounds a month to watch it, which... Mm, stings again we're back to that grit when you bite into a sandwich and you taste the grit um in the back of your <laughs> mouth i i just it didn't add up for me so i just i stopped so first of all i cancelled the five pounds per month the stars thing because the only thing that i was interested in watching was outlander i generally don't watch um a lot of uh tv i tend to now like a lot of Korean dramas. Those are pretty amazing. Um, and in terms of books, so I sort of, I stopped watching Outlander and I stopped reading. I was reading A Breath of Snow and Ashes because I've been rereading it. And I decided to stop reading A Breath of Snow and Ashes. And that was because I had thought that maybe it's because I'm reading the books at the same time as I'm watching the TV show. So that's why I'm finding it so hard to accept some of the changes, some of the things that they have done. But even with the distance of four months of not reading the books and not reading and really having spent time thinking about it, I really can't get behind where, what they are doing with the characters and the relationships. And I think that Outlander was very outstanding because of the relationships and the characters and Previously, that's always been a little bit more consistent than it is now. So that's been the thing. Um, I did start reading Anne of Green Gables and I'm absolutely loving that. I'm now on book, is it book seven? Yeah, I'm now on book seven and it's just, it's really lovely. So I highly recommend Anne of Green Gables if you haven't read that. Um, it's, it's a really great, it's a really great series um, of books. So I've come to the conclusion that I am parting ways with Outlander and that's okay. I don't feel any uh, egregiousness about it at all. I still love the books. I have the books. Um, I've got book one, book two and book three as physical copies. And then I've got all of the books um, except for the new one, which I've decided I'm not going to read because the reviews have been less than favorable and I have started wanting to read it but I have seen how many pages it has and I thought that I would do it as an audio book but even as an audio book it is really 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 long so I made the decision that you know what it's okay it's fine I've read all of the other stuff I've reread um like, I think the first three, I've reread them probably about six times since I first discovered them. And I love them. And they're thumbed and I've got bookmarks on some of my favorite sections. And that's wonderful. And I'm okay and I'm happy with that. And I will recommend watching for people who don't want to read the books. I would recommend watching like the first four seasons of um, Outlander because I think that those are really quite good. The first four seasons of the TV show are really quite good. Um yeah, and if you want to read the books, always the books are superior. So that's the reason why I stopped doing the Outlander episodes and um, saying goodbye to Outlander, you know, but with a sweetness, you know, like it's a sweet, it's a sweet sorrow um, and that's okay. I doubt I will be going back to even try and finish this season. I'm not the sort of person generally that will 
finish some, you know, like a TV show season just for the sake of it, because I firmly believe that entertainment should just be that entertaining. I shouldn't have to work to be entertained because there is so much out there that can entertain me. So that's where I'm at with that. Thank you so much for watching. If you've watched until the end, um, hopefully you will still hang around. I'm planning on doing um, a series of videos about um you know it's lifestyle stuff it's lifestyle stuff but we've got a lot of summer projects that's coming out of the garden at the moment and we're doing a lot of preserving and things like that and i kind of want to share that but yeah i basically i'm done with outlander thank you so much for those that have hung out with me during the outlander days i think that we had um, a lot of fun whilst it was there but all good things must come to an end and this is it until i see you next time i wish you good health happiness and joy Bye.